With the Fed now saying they're in no rush to cut interest rates this year, the markets are worried that we will see only a maximum of one interest rate cut in 2024. And when we take a look at the heat map of the S&P year to date, and in particular, when we do focus on real estate, we can see a large portion of these are in fact down double digits. And in today's episode, we are going to focus on some of these big REITs that have taken a large hit. We're going to take a look, in fact, five REITs that have been hammered over the last 12 months. We're going to take a look at each one's historical performance. We'll take a look at their dividend safety. We'll run through some of their financial metrics. And we will get to our own intrinsic value of each one of these real estate investment trusts, our own acceptable buy price given our investor margin of safety. And we'll look towards Wall Street to see if they believe there is any upside for each one of these over the next 12 months. And for those who don't like looking at individual stocks due to the fact that they can have some large pullbacks and want some safety in ETFs today, we will take a quick look at Vanguard Real Estate, ticker symbol VNQ, look at their performance, look at their holdings and talk about whether or not this could be the best option for yourself as an investor. So the first REIT that has been hammered over the last 12 months, we have American Tower Corporation down 17%. We can see it is now trading towards its 52-week low. It does have a trading 12-month yield of 3.65% and a P to FFO forward-looking of 172 Now, we have two of the three analysts here considering this a buy, with Quant calling this a hold. Now, if you've been a shareholder of AMT over the last 10 years, you would be up 109%. Bear in mind, it doesn't include dividends reinvested and all-time highs were sitting around $302 August 2021, nearly three years ago. In terms of looking at this Telecom Tower REIT, the dividend safety score is 78. It does look to be safe. Market cap, $83 billion, a large cap company. In terms of looking at those key recessionary metrics, well, they didn't pay a dividend, so no recessionary data. What we can see, however, they had plus 8% sales, well above the average of the S&P at negative 12, and they also significantly outperformed the S&P, negative 37, with the S&P coming in at negative 55. Now, in terms of dividend growth, what we can see the last full year, this was a double digits at 10%. Last five years, double digits 15%. Last 10 years, again, double digits at 19%. We also know they have been increasing those dividends for the last 11 years. In terms of taking a look at dividend yield theory, now for those that are new to the channel, it states a company is undervalued when the current yield is above the five-year average. Right now, we have a significant undervaluation signal, as well as that on the forward P to AFFO, 16.8 below the five-year average. But remember, we don't look at any of these models in isolation and will conclude towards the end. We note the real estate sector, though, is a little bit lower at 13.3. Now, with REITs, we do focus on the adjusted funds from Operation Pair as the free cash flow, which we do like for other companies, is a lot more volatile. Below 90% is what we're aiming for, although we do know for AMT, even though it has increased over the longer term, 65% is still very healthy, 63% expected in FY24. Again, no worries, significantly lower than the 90%. In terms of the adjusted funds from operation, it has essentially doubled, in fact, over the last 10 years, although we do know it is not very consistent year on year. Positive to inform the expectation is an increase into FY24. In terms of the AFFO per share growth percentage-wise, we can see here quite a number of years of double-digit growth. However, in the more recent year, we do see a negative 2% drop. 24 is expected to be a 5% increase. In terms of top-line growth, sales 5-10%, to steady moderate growth for REITs. It has started to slow down over the period. We do note 4% in FY23. We would like to see this go back up to the double-digit growth that we have seen not too long ago. Now, in terms of shares outstanding, this is very good. The reason for this, very typical to see REITs dilute your position significantly over the last 10 years. With AMT, the telecom REIT, what we can see, in fact, they don't increase it that rapidly. And you will see over the course of this episode, other REITs that dilute your position a lot, lot quicker. Main reason for this is they have to issue equity so they can fund property acquisitions as they don't retain a lot of that internally generated cash flow as that is paid out as dividends. 
Numerically, then, we can see they have nearly tripled their top line over the last 10 years. And when we look at the ROIC for REITs, we want to see 5% or 3 to 5, ideally, as a minimum, just to give us faith that Mandarin are able to effectively allocate their capital, and they're doing very, very well year on year consistently. Terms of margins on the operating side, again, pretty strong around the mid 30s consistently over the last 10 year period. And when we finally look at the net debt to EBITDA, the earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization, which does correlate to both balance sheet strength and dividend safety, we see it straddle around the 5.5 that we want to see as a maximum. Now, these are the number of years it would take the company to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. So not too bad. It is still below that 5.14. Expected to be there or thereabouts in FY24 as well. So no major issues with that dividend, especially when we consider the payout ratio is significantly lower than 90%. Now let's jump into the valuation of AMT. As always, if you enjoy the content values being provided, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button. And as always, do hit that pin notification. Now, typically we run through all of these models to get to the intrinsic value. Today's episode, let's just jump straight in. The intrinsic value does come to $221. Now, current price significantly lower at 174, margin of safety. Now, we do use 10% always to start off with. People may start off with 5, people may start off with 0 or 20. The reason why we use 10 is because we execute if we believe it meets three golden criteria, a wide moat, strong financial metrics, and good forward-looking data. And then we keep going till it's near the current trading price, and we can see it is pretty much trading at around a 20% MOS level based on these estimates and judgments with Wall Street over the next 12 months, believing that the share price will hit around $225, slightly higher than our intrinsic value with 29% upside for this period. As always, do let us know your thoughts of these stocks, of these REITs as we do go along today. The next REIT that has been hammered is MAA, Mid-America Apartment Communities, down 17% over the last 12 months. Again, trading right there towards its 52-week low, with a higher yield than AMT, around 4.64%, P to FFO of 14.2%, and we have one analyst out of three indicating it as a buy. Over the last 10 years, we do note it is up 83.5%, but we can see it has fallen massively from the peak of around $229 at the back end of 2021. Now, dividend safety score of 97, very safe. In fact, one of the highest score obtainables. Market cap, just under 15 billion, a large cap company. Those key recessionary metrics, well, they maintained the dividend they had plus 1.2%, so above average, and a near S&P return coming in at negative 51. Now, dividend growth, 5% in December last year. Not the worst, given the fact it is above the inflationary target of 4% we advocate on the channel. 9% over the last five years, quite nice to note. Over the last 20 years, at a minimum, they have been increasing those dividends in line with inflation, and they have also been increasing the dividends for the last 13 years, whilst paying a dividend for the last 29 without a reduction. Now, in terms of Dividend yield theory, again, a strong double undervaluation signal. In fact, probably the highest yield they have offered over the last five years. And we can see, again, forward P to FO significantly lower than the five-year rolling of 21.4. And it is slightly higher than real estate sector at 13.3. So drawing your attention to the adjusted funds from operation payout, below 90% consistently, 68 in FY23, expected to increase in FY24, but still below that 90% maximum level that we want to see from REITs in general. In terms of the adjusted funds from operation, pretty much doubled over the last 10 years. Although, again, we do notice that it is very inconsistent, but unlike AMT, it is expected to drop into next year to around 795. In terms of looking at the growth percentage, a little bit inconsistent. It has very strong years of double-digit growth, but it isn't uncommon to see negative growth. And in 2017, we do see negative 16%. In terms of top line growth, though, at least 5 to 10% every single year, it does struggle with that on a consistent basis. But again, similar to the AFFO growth, we do note they have some very solid years at double digits, although they also have some years of low single digit growth too. Numerically speaking, though, they have doubled their top line from 1 billion to just over 2 in 2023. Now, as we mentioned earlier, different REITs, different dilution rates, we can see they would have diluted your position as a shareholder over the last 10 years. But realistically, the major one did come in 2016. Since 2017, they haven't really increased those shares outstanding other than 3 million shares. 
Now, in terms of the ROIC, increasing and in fact quite nice to note six percent over the last two years so above that three to five percent level that we advocate as a minimum operating margin also operational efficiencies we do see it increase over the longer term 32 percent in 2023 looking very strong and healthy and when we finally look at the net debt to ebitda this is very strong for a reit we can see 3.59 in fy23 there or thereabouts again in FY24. So very, very solid. Definitely one to consider just purely looking at that very strong balance sheet. In terms of jumping into the valuation then, and don't forget you can grab a copy of this model by clicking on the pinned comment below. So you can get to the intrinsic value as well as the acceptable buy price of companies in your own portfolio and those on your watch list. So a 10% margin of safety, a buy up to 142, at 15% up to 134. And at 20%, pretty much again around the current trading price with upside from Wall Street of around 15%. So with Mid America Apartments, you are getting a 20% MOS with 15% from what Wall Street expect over the next year. We then move on to CCI Crown Castle, which has been absolutely battered down 29% over the last 12 months. Over the last 10 years, however, it is marginally up 30%. We can see all-time highs sitting around that $200 level at the back end of 2021. Again, trading towards its 52-week low with quite a nice starting yield of 6.54%, a P to FFO of below 14, and again, similar to the previous re one buy signal with two hold. In terms of looking at that dividend safety, well, a score of 60, borderline safe, Market cap, 42 billion, a large cap company. Now, last recession, again, they didn't pay a dividend, so no comparative data. However, they did have plus 8% sales with a near S&P return at negative 57. Now, they haven't increased that dividend since 2022, although on average over the last five years, it has increased by 8%. And we can see they have been increasing those dividends for the last nine years. So there is the expectation of a dividend increase soon. In terms of dividend yield theory, a massive undervaluation signal. The yield, in fact, 6.63%, nearly double that of the five-year average. And the forward P to FO is one of the lowest it has been over the last five years. In terms of the real estate sector P to FFO, we do know, however, it is pretty much in line with Crown Castle. Looking and focusing on the payout ratio, now one thing just to note with CCI, they are expecting FY24 to be hitting around that 90% level that we do want as a maximum. So definitely something to keep an eye on. We don't want that to breach that or at least not too high above it. AFFO per share, well again, it is increasing over the longer term, but again, similar to the previous REIT, they are dropping in FY24. So do understand that, reflect that in your own investment thesis, as well as your margin of safety. In terms of the growth per share percentage wise, actually not the worst. We do see a negative growth all the way back in FY 2014 and the expectation there that it is expected to drop a negative 8% in next 12 month report. In terms of the sales growth were well, 5 to 10%. Again, pretty inconsistent over the period. Again, we want to point out FY 23 expected or in fact was flat and we can see that in the numbers here. Whilst it has nearly doubled over the period, last year there was little movement to the top line. And we can see when looking at these shares outstanding, they have again increased their shares, essentially diluting your position. But in fact, these last three REITs that we have looked don't dilute your position at a very rapid rate in comparison to the likes of Realty Income and Vici Properties. In terms of the ROIC, 5-7% to 7 pretty consistently, so that is very healthy. 7% over the last two years is pretty attractive to see as an investor. And operational efficiency as we do see the margin increase over the longer term. When looking then finally the net debt to EBITDA, we can understand why that borderline safe dividend score is there, not just because of the net debt to EBITDA, which straddles around the 5.5, but also the fact that FY24, there is the expectation that the AFFO power is going to be around 90%, and we can see it is expected to breach 5.5 to 5.65 in FY24. In terms of the valuation though, is there a lot of undervaluation? Is there a large margin of safety? Well, the intrinsic value comes to $133. So again, start off with that 10% MOS level, a buy up to 120 At 15%, still looking like a buy. And we keep going till it's near the current trading price. And we can see not too far off a 30% margin of safety, somewhere between 25 to 30 And in terms of Wall Street, well, they have the expectation that the share price is expected to increase to $121 with a 29% upside expected. So 
we have a 25 to 30 percent mos level with near 30 percent upside for the foreseeable future as always though do let us know your thoughts on these reits below we then move on to the next reit which is extra space storage down 13 percent over the last 12 months over the last 10 years, however, up 168%, we do see all-time highs sitting at that $227 level, again, back end of 2021. Currently trades in the midpoint of the 52-week range with a yield of 4.7% and a P to FFO of 17.2. And again, we have a 1 out of 3 buy rating with the other two considering it a hold. Dividend safety score then 80, it does look to be safe. Market cap 29 billion, a large cap company. Those recessionary metrics, well, they cut the dividend during the last recession. They had above average growth, but they did trail the S&P with that negative 66% return. Actually, a very strong REIT in terms of dividend growth. 8% last February, 14% over the last five years, double digits over the last 10 years on average. So that is very strong to see. And they have been increasing those dividends for the last 14 years. Now, in terms of looking at that dividend yield theory, we do note again a double undervaluation signal, both on the yield and the P to AFFO. However, we do note the real estate sector is much lower at 13.3. So when we focus on the payout ratio, what we can clearly see here is that the AFFO is around 85% expected in FY24. So that is nearly at that 90% level, something just to keep an eye on as that whilst may not be high right now, it could be something that does start to increase over the longer term, given they are paying out quite a hefty dividend. In terms of the AFFO per share, well, we can see it has increased, in fact, nearly four times over the last 10 years. And we can see FY24, it is expected to drop down to 763. And when we do draw your attention to the sales growth, 5 to 10 percent they have pretty much hit that if not a lot better consistently over the longer term last three years being very very solid numbers to their top line revenue and in fact we can see it grow nearly four times from 6 point or 0.66 billion to 2.62 shares outstanding again positive to note they don't dilute your position at a very rapid rate for REITs, so that is a fairly strong point there to just to note and when we do take a look at the roic they have had some very strong years and even the drop into FY23 at 5% is still a very remarkable level. Now, operating margin as well, very strong in the mid to upper ends of the 40%, 49% in FY23. And finally, when we do draw your attention to the net debt to EBITDA, it is pretty high consistently. However, a real bonus for investors is the expectation of this to drop dramatically from 6.54 down to 4.79. So we should see a nicer score on that dividend safety and the balance sheet should look a lot stronger next year. In terms of the valuation then of EXR, it is coming out in today's episode to be the average of these models, which is now looking at $166. In terms of the current price, we're $136, margin of safety at 10%. We keep going till it's near that current trading price. And for today's episode, it isn't at a 20% level yet, between 15 to 20% MOS with the estimates and judgments. With Wall Street forecasting a 18% upside to $160, indicating this to be a buy, depending again on your own investment thesis, whether or not this is sufficient for you over the next 12 months. We then move on to public storage, ticker symbol PSA, a triple buy rating by analysts, down 11% over the last 12 months. Although we do know over the last 10 years, it is up 59%. Again, remember, it doesn't include dividends reinvested. And we do see all-time highs around two years ago of just under $400. It is currently in the mid to lower end of the 52-week range with a 4.52% yield and a P to FFO of under 16. Dividend safety then 96, a very safe score. Market cap 47 billion, a large cap company. Recessory metrics, well, they maintain the dividend during the last recession, average growth, and also beat the S&P with their negative 38% return. Dividend growth, well, we're still waiting for an increase over the last five years, an 8% year on year. Over the last 20 years, 10% nice, strong double-digit growth. And we can note, because they have maintained that dividend for such a long time, we only have one year of consecutive increases. However, we have 43 years of a dividend being paid without a reduction. Now, dividend yield theory, we can state here clearly double undervaluation signal, which does look very strong for those undervalued investors. Although we do note real estate sector Peter FO is lower again at 13.3. 
Now, when we focus on the AFFO POW, it is a little bit inconsistent in the 70s, the 80s, the 60s, the 50s. Although what we want to know is FY24 at 82%. Still near that 90% level, but there is sufficient room that we can indicate this does look safe for now. In terms of the AFFO per share, well, we can see nearly doubled over the last 10 years, but it has had quite a number of years with very minimal growth, and we can see that is expected to continue into FY24. In terms of the sales growth then of that 5 to 10 percent level last three years very strong but again there are some years where it has had minimal growth notably from 2018 to 2020 and when we look at it numerically however they have doubled their top line and shares outstanding very very nice to know in fact one of the best in the re-industry they've only increased those shares by 3 million over the period now ROIC again very strong this would be a very good ROIC metric for standard companies let alone a REIT so nice to note 12% in FY23 is something that is consistently achieved at this company. Operating margin as well very consistent in the low 50 so consistency on a very good metric is very very nice and attractive to those investors. And one thing we would say is that net debt to EBITDA has been increasing over the period. Nonetheless, 2.68 in FY23, 2.53 in FY24 is still something very, very strong to note. They do have one of the best balance sheets from these REITs that we have analyzed today. So in terms of PSA, what is their intrinsic value? In today's episode, it is coming to a total of $315. With a margin of safety at 10%, we can see a buy up to 283. And then when we keep going to get to the acceptable buy price, not at a 20% level just yet, between a 15 to 20% MOS. And what we can see in terms of Wall Street, well, they expect upside of 18%. They do indicate this to be a buy based on a price target of $312. Now, before we jump into the ETF for today, just to let you know, we have released our latest free weekly article. If you want to gain access, all completely free. Latest article, we ran through 10 stocks with massive upside. All of these articles you can read straight away by clicking on the pinned comment below and you get instant access. So for those that don't like to invest in individual REITs or stocks, there is the opportunity to take a look at VNQ, the Vanguard Real Estate ETF. Now we'll have a quick look at their holdings and performance. It does have an expense ratio of 0.12%, which isn't too bad for those that do have REITs in general. Some range from around 0.03 and you can get some that are very, very costly. Current market price for this REIT is around $80.36. And when we take a look at their holdings, we can see their top three holdings are made off some very strong companies. We have Prologis, which holds around 7.61% rating. We in fact have AMT, which we did just review today, and we can see a 5.82% percentage of the fund. And the third one, which I do like quite a lot, Equinix, ticker symbol EQIX, that is around a 4.9% weighting to this ETF. Now, in terms of the performance of this ETF, what we can see here is that over the last year, it is up around 8.51%. Over the last five years, around 37 And over the last 10 years, 62 So for the last historical period that we can see here, even since inception, it hasn't had the greatest of returns. So it really does come down to you as an investor, whether or not you prefer the safety and security. But again, you may not get the returns that you would if you were looking to pick up undervalued REITs. But again, each investor has a different strategy. Let me know yours below. Let me know if there are any others in the real estate sector that you do prefer to VNQ. And as always, drop your comments below. If you enjoyed today's episode, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button. And as always, we'll see you all on the next one.